Hello everyone, welcome to Ohm Institute. I am Surendra Reddy, Faculty for Electrical Machines at Ohm Institute, Hyderabad. In today's session, I am going to discuss about a special machine known as a stepper motor. As the name itself is indicating, it is a motor in which the shaft will rotate in number of steps. The shaft does not rotate continuously, it will rotate in a definite number of steps. So, what's the basic difference between a conventional motor and stepper motor? Conventional motor is the one, maybe it is a DC motor or AC motor. It is the one in which the rotor shaft will rotate continuously. It's a continuous motion. But in stepper motor, the rotor does not rotate continuously. It will rotate in some definite number of steps. Okay. And we will use this stepper motor for various applications like, you know, computer printer and uh, any position control systems. All right. Now, what type of supply we are going to provide for this stepper motor and how many different types of stepper motors are there? What is mean by step angle? What is the relation between step angle and state or poles, rotor poles? Various discussions we are going to consider in this particular lecture. All right. Now, let's talk about the type of input that we are going to provide for stepper motor. Now, you can see this waveform here. Suppose if we have a conventional DC motor, obviously the current input that we are going to give is a continuous DC supply. If it is a conventional AC motor like induction motor or synchronous motor, we will give continuous AC supply. This is what we are going to give for AC motor. But in case of stepper motor, it will not be a continuous current input. Instead of that, we will give current pulses as input. You can see the last waveform. So, this is the type of input that we are going to provide for a stepper motor, okay, current in number of, uh, you know, steps or pulses, we will call them as pulses. But the question here is that how to create such type of current input for this particular motor, very simple. So, these type of pulses we can create by using uh, electro, I know, semiconductor controlled switches, am I right? So, that is by using a simple power electronic circuit, we can generate these current pulses and then give these current pulses as input for the stepper motor windings, okay. And then the motor will rotate by one step for every one single input pulse. So, for the first pulse, the rotor will rotate by one step. For the second pulse, the rotor will rotate by one more step. Therefore, if you give 100 pulses in one second, the rotor will rotate by 100 steps in one second. That is how, okay. So, each input pulse can create one step rotation in the rotor. All right. Now, let's understand what are the different types of stepper motors that we have. Okay. There are basically two types of stepper motors based on the design of rotor magnetic circuit. Based on rotor magnetic circuit. Okay. Yes. Based on the design of rotor magnetic circuit, there are two types of stepper motors. First one, variable reluctance type stepper motor. Second one, permanent magnet type stepper motor. But one point you need to understand here that is even though rotor designs are different, the stator design is the same for both machines. Okay, the stator design is the same. That's why we will first try to discuss the stator magnetic circuit design. Then we will move to the different types of rotors that we have. Okay, let's see the stator design. Okay, now you can see this diagram. Currently, we have the stator magnetic circuit, this is only the cross-sectional view of the machine and you can understand there are four poles available on the stator and these poles are also known as salient poles or projected poles. The poles are, poles are salient type okay? and four poles are there. Now on these four poles, concentrated winding will be provided. So remember, stator consists of concentrated type winding. Okay, right now four poles are there and I can wound two phases for these four poles. Let's see how winding will be wounded on state or magnetic circuit. Now see that this is one pole and exactly opposite there is one more pole. I will consider these two opposite poles as one pair, these two opposite poles as a second pair. So let's imagine a winding is being wounded on these two poles right now. Yes. This is one winding, let us call it as a phase A winding. Right now, I am assuming this is a phase A winding. Now, we have two more opposite poles here. 
okay you can see this one and this one both are opposite to each other that is the second pole pair and i can wound one more winding on these two poles okay and let me call this winding as phase b winding so therefore i can call this particular stator right now as a four pole stator or two phase stator anything is same four pole or two phases all right similarly suppose if the machine has six poles indirectly you can wound uh, three phases okay every two poles will create one phase therefore if there are six poles we can even create a six uh, three phase winding also let me show you that particular diagram now you can see this is the stator magnetic core having how many number of poles six poles are there therefore we can place a three phase winding here let's see uh, this pole exactly opposite pole we have to select let us say this is one pole pair uh, creating phase a winding okay next let me select two more opposite poles this pole and exactly opposite let us place a concentrated winding here okay let us place a concentrated winding yes this is phase b winding Similarly, there are two more poles and let us place one more concentrated winding over here. Yes, this is like phase C winding. So, I can understand here there are six poles and three phase windings are there. But we are giving cur continuous current as input or current pulses as input, current pulses. So, let us understand how to give these current pulses as input. Remember one thing, let me go back, you look at this, there are two phase windings right now. Remember, when we are giving current as input for phase A winding, when we are giving current as input for phase A winding, there should not be any current in phase B winding. Okay, phase B winding current is zero when there is a current input for phase A winding. So, imagine if this is the direction of current in phase A winding, based on the direction of current, can you tell me what will be the direction of a flux created by phase A? So, obviously, according to the current direction, flux will go in the downward direction. Therefore, this acts like north pole and this acts like south pole. And when poles are available on phase A right now, can I say phase B poles does not create any polarity because there was no current in phase B winding? Yes. Now, the moment when phase A current becomes zero because we are gi not giving continuous current, we are giving current pulses as input. The moment when current in phase A winding becomes zero, immediately current must flow in phase B winding. So, in case if current is passing through phase B winding this way, obviously flux will be created by phase B winding and this will be the direction of flux. Therefore, this acts like north pole, this acts like south pole. So, that means what we need to understand at a given point of time, current will be available only in one phase. Remaining phases, there won't be any current. Okay. What happens if a current was given for both windings at the same time? We will understand little later. That part also we will consider. Now, look at this particular diagram. How many poles are available? Six poles are available. That means three phases. In case if I give phase A winding a current input, at that moment, the current in B and C winding must be equal to zero. Therefore, this is north pole, this is south pole, there is no polarity for the remaining poles. And once a current in phase A winding becomes zero, immediately current in phase B winding must start flowing. Therefore, a north pole will create here and here. The moment when current in phase B winding becomes zero, then current will start flowing in phase C winding, then a north pole will create here and here, south pole here. Therefore, at a given point of time, current must flow only in one winding. So, how do you achieve this? This is all we have to achieve by using a simple electronic system. Okay, We will use an electronic circuit, uh, probably it will be a power electronic circuit. And using that circuit, we will generate current pulses based on our requirement. Okay. All right. So, this is about the stator magnetic circuit of stepper motor. We can use any number of poles based on the amount of step angle that we require. Suppose, if I use two more extra poles, that means total eight poles, that means you can use a fourth phase winding also. 
phase A, phase B, phase C and phase D will also come into picture. If we use 10 poles, a fifth phase winding can also be created. Okay, so likewise, based on the number of poles on stator, the number of phases we can define. Understand? Currently, I took only two designs, two phase design and three phase design. You can use a four phase, five phase, any number of phases in stator magnetic circuit. This is all about stator magnetic circuit. That means the summary about stator is, stator is a salient pole design. And stator poles are wounded with concentrated winding and current pulses will be given as input and when we are giving current input for any one phase winding the remaining phase windings should not receive any current okay at a given point of time only one phase winding will receive the current as input okay fine now let's talk about rotor magnetic circuit as I told you already there are two types of rotor designs okay uh, variable reluctance type rotor and permanent magnet type rotor. So let us consider variable reluctance type rotor first. So before discussing about reluctance rotor or variable reluctance rotor, first we need to understand what is mean by reluctance torque in this motor. See as the name itself is indicating reluctance. That means the torque is being created due to the reluctance difference between stator and rotor. We know that the reluctance between stator and rotor will depend upon the length of air gap. Reluctance of air gap is directly proportional to length of air gap. When more air gap length is there, more reluctance will be created. Less air gap length, less reluctance. Tell me one thing, when two resistors are connected in parallel, current will always flow through which resistance? Low resistance path. Similarly, if two reluctances are available, flux will always pass through low reluctance path. Okay, that's what we need to understand. Now, look at this particular diagram. This is a reluctance rotor, a simple reluctance rotor circuit. In this reluctance rotor circuit, this blue color one is, is nothing but a stator magnet and this black color one is a free moving rotor body. You can rotate that rotor body in any direction. Are you finding winding on stator magnetic circuit? Yes. There is a winding on stator magnetic circuit that to a concentrated type winding. But on the rotor magnet, there was no winding available. That means we are not exciting rotor at all. It's a simple ferromagnetic material. That's all. Okay. It's a freely moving ferromagnetic material. That's all. Nothing more than that. We don't give any excitation to rotor. But for stator, we are giving excitation. Now let's see what is going to happen here. Imagine stator started to receive current pulses this way according to the direction of current can you expect what will be the direction of flux yes this is how the current is passing through stator according to the direction of current so the flux will flow this way flux is flowing this way that means can i say this is north pole and this will be definitely south pole flux always flows from north pole to south pole okay uh, but before drawing that flux, this is definitely north pole and this is definitely south pole. But just now I told you, flux will always choose low reluctance path or high reluctance path, low reluctance path. Low reluctance means high permeability medium. And here we have a air gap is there and a ferromagnetic material is there. Obviously, ferromagnetic material will offer low reluctance. That means flux will always try to pass through this ferromagnetic material this way. This is how the flux will flow from north pole to south pole. Flux will not flow in a straight line path. Flux will choose low reluctance path. This is how the flux is flowing through rotor and will reach south pole. Am I right? Now tell me one thing. Flux will always flow from which pole to which pole? North pole to south pole. And most importantly, this is the flux created by stator circuit or rotor circuit, stator circuit. But that stator flux, which is passing through rotor, will induce some poles in the rotor. Because rotor is a ferromagnetic material. Whenever flux is passing through any magnetic material, obviously that material will be magnetized and poles will be created in that magnet. And you tell me, as it is a north pole, Definitely can I say a south pole will create here. Yes, because flux always flow from north pole to south pole. Okay, this is already a north pole. Therefore, this will be definitely south pole. 
and this is already a south pole therefore can i say a north pole will create here yes always remember whenever flux passing through any magnetic material poles will automatically induce now tell me this is a north pole and this is a south pole can i say there will be a force of attraction between the two that's why this uh, you know south pole will be attracted towards this north pole similarly this north pole will be attracted towards this south pole that means a torque is created and this torque is what we call it as reluctance torque of the motor okay we will call it as reluctance torque and that reluctance torque is created due to uniform air gap or non uniform air gap non uniform air gap and can you expect in which direction the rotor is going to rotate because of this reluctance torque so obviously the rotor will rotate in anti clockwise direction or counter clockwise direction the rotor will rotate in a counter clockwise direction if a rotor rotated in a counter clockwise direction can i say after some time definitely the rotor will reach a new position like this yes after some time the rotor will reach a new position here and once the rotor reaches this new position that's it the rotor don't move further okay so why rotor does not move further because you need to understand one thing the amount of reluctance torque created it is always proportional to sin lambda and we need to understand what exactly this lambda is the lambda is the angle between angle between stator pole axis stator pole axis and rotor pole axis the angle between stator pole axis and rotor pole axis that means you see what is happening here when rotor is at this position can i say this is the rotor pole axis this is the rotor pole axis and what is the stator pole axis the line passing through stator this is the stator pole axis this is a stator pole axis this is rotor pole axis can i say between the two there was a finite angle available when the angle is finite indirectly the reluctance torque is also a finite value that's why the rotor started to rotate but once rotor reaches the final position you see that once rotor reaches to this final position can i say stator pole axis and rotor pole axis are in parallel with each other this is the stator pole axis and rotor pole is axis is also in the same line both are in phase with each other that means what is the angle between the two zero degrees when the angle between the two is zero the torque is also equal to zero there is no more reluctance torque that means rotor will not rotate further it reaches a final position understand so in order to create reluctance torque there is a finite angle required between stator pole axis and rotor pole axis and automatically because of the attractive force the rotor started to rotate this particular you know torque is what we call it as reluctance torque in electrical machines and this principle will be used for a stepper motor okay and those type of stepper motors are called as uh, variable reluctance type stepper motor okay now let's understand uh, one example <coughs> see i am considering a variable reluctance type stepper motor where stator consists of six poles and rotor consists of four poles okay stator consists of six poles and rotor consists of four poles four poles or four teeth anything is same okay four poles or four teeth never design a stepper motor with the same number of teeth in stator and rotor if stator poles and rotor poles are same numbers or if stator poles and rotor teeth are same numbers magnetic locking will create and rotor does not rotate we call that particular phenomena is known as cogging phenomena that you will study in induction machines okay and that's why never design stepper motor with same number of poles in stator and rotor cogging will create and rotor does not rotate okay so to avoid that number of poles must be different in stator and rotor okay now let's take this example six poles in stator and four poles in rotor okay look at this diagram guys just enquire just look at this diagram pause the video look at this diagram for a moment you can understand there are six poles in stator okay and there are four poles in rotor let me give some numbers here i already told you 
स्टेट आर विल हैव वाइंडिंग्स और रोट आर विल हैव वाइंडिंग्स स्टेट आर पोल्स विल हैव वाइंडिंग्स कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड वाइंडिंग्स रोट आर पोल्स आर नॉट प्रोवाइडेड विथ एनी वाइंडिंग्स एंड दीज आर सेलियंट पोल रोट आर सेलियंट पोल स्टेटर एयर गैप इज नॉट यूनिफॉर्म ओके नाउ इमेजिन दिस पोल ए एंड एक्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट साइड ए डैश ए एंड ए डैश इज इनडाइरेक्टली फेज ए वाइंडिंग पोल्स ओके नेक्स्ट B and B dash is phase B winding poles. This is C and C dash are phase C winding poles. Okay, actually winding should be there, but right now I am not showing you that winding only for clarity purpose. Okay, actually winding will be there. Hmm. Coming to the rotor, there were no windings available. I will just number the rotor poles one, two, three, four simply. Okay, let's say this is pole one, this is pole two. This is a pole three. This is a pole four. Okay. Now, I also mentioned one point. As the three phase windings are there, we will give current pulses as input for all three phases at the same time, or any one phase, any one phase. Imagine there was no input given right now, so rotor is stationary, not rotating at all. Okay. And just tell me angles here. as there are six poles available in state r what will be the angle between each pole obviously 60 degrees 360 degrees occupied by six poles therefore the angle between two adjacent poles in state r is 60 degrees this is 60 degrees right okay 60 degrees next tell me this is pole a and this is a pole 1 so what will be the angle between pole a and pole 1 there are four poles in rotor therefore the angle from one pole to another pole will be how much 90 degrees right okay so this is 90 this is 90 this is 60 my question is what will be the angle between this pole a and pole 1 can i say pole 1 is exactly facing the center between a and b exactly the middle point between a and b means can i say this would be equal to 30 degrees yes okay let me show with more clarity yeah this is 30 degrees okay now let us give current pulse as input here hmm okay let us give current pulses as input right now what i am trying to do is that i wanted to give say current input for phase a winding let us give current input for only phase a winding no current for phase b and phase c winding that means how many poles will create in stator even though six poles are there but the active poles are only two why because only phase a winding will receive the current so and obviously uh, let's say north pole is created here and the south pole is created here just imagine based on the direction of current okay but there are no poles in phase b and phase c right now because there was no current input now flux will always flow from which pole to which pole north pole to south pole so see this is how the flux will travel okay now according to the direction of flux what type of pole will induce here yes as it is a north pole can i say automatically a south pole will induce and as it is a south pole can i say automatically a north pole will induce here and therefore you need to understand one more thing where is a state or pole axis right now and where is rotor pole axis see state or even though six poles are there only these two poles are active therefore state or pole axis is a vertical one this is a state or pole axis and in the rotor even though four poles are there only these two poles are active therefore this is the rotor pole axis this is a state or pole axis this is rotor pole axis what is the angle between the two 30 degrees angle is there therefore reluctance torque is a finite or zero finite so immediately the rotor started to rotate and can you tell me by how many degrees the rotor started to rotate yes and in which direction at least the rotor will rotate this is north pole this is south pole there will be a force of attraction therefore the rotor will experience a force this way similarly this north pole and south pole will attract the rotor will experience a force this way that means can i say the rotor started to rotate in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction and by how many degrees the rotor will rotate exactly 30 degrees you can see this is the rotor pole axis 
and this is the state or pole axis what is the angle between these two right now 30 degrees therefore the rotor will rotate in a counter clockwise direction by 30 degrees once the rotor rotated in a counter clockwise by 30 degrees the next diagram will come now see that yes see earlier this is north pole this is a south pole see the previous diagram this is north pole this is south pole but because of the reluctance torque the rotor started to rotate in counterclockwise direction so this pole number one will come to this position pole number three will come to this position that i am showing in the next diagram this is pole number one now this is pole number three this is pole number two this is pole number four understand or not so rotor just rotated by 30 degrees and that 30 degrees of rotation is what we call it as step angle we call it as step angle represented with a letter alpha okay step angle is nothing but the angle by which the rotor rotated in one step okay after reaching this position can i say rotor does not rotate anymore because state or pole axis rotor pole axis are parallel to each other so there is no more reluctance torque rotor does not rotate further okay now once the rotor stops rotating now give the input for phase b winding stop input for phase a winding give the input for phase b winding now where is a phase b winding poles can i say this is b and b dash poles let me show in the next diagram now i have to remove the poles in phase a i must give poles to phase b winding b b dash now north pole is created here let me change the color okay this is north pole and this is south pole based on the direction of current i have shown you already how the windings will be no more poles are available on the remaining four because current is now carried by only phase b winding okay now tell me how the flux will flow from north pole to south pole flux will always select low reluctance path so this north pole flux will travel like this and will reach south pole here understand or not okay now uh, according to the given diagram you can easily understand what is the angle between this north pole position and this second pole position once again this is 30 degrees you can count that angle okay pause the video just to draw a rough diagram in a white paper understand this angle is equal to 30 degrees again okay now see this is a north pole obviously which pole will induce here south this is a south pole so obviously a north pole will induce here now once again understand what will be the direction of torque created this is north pole this is south pole so attractive force will be there this is north pole and this is south pole attractive force is there the rotor will once again receive anti clockwise direction torque because of this anti clockwise direction torque can i say rotor will rotate by one more step and what will be that step here right now 30 degrees okay that step angle alpha right now in this particular design that step angle is equal to 30 degrees okay now see once rotor rotated by 30 degrees second pole will come here okay and fourth pole will come to this location third pole will go to this location first pole will come to this location will you agree with me just imagine if rotor rotated by one more step 30 degrees okay second pole will come to this location fourth pole will come to this location third pole will come to this location first pole will come to this location understand or not okay so i will try to uh, erase this particular picture and i will draw a new picture now see this let me remove all this now in the rotor okay so can i say after 30 degrees of uh, step i can say uh, second pole will come here fourth pole will come here first pole will come here third pole will come here okay now rotor will rotate further or cannot rotate further cannot rotate further why because this is a state or pole axis and this is the rotor pole axis also no angle between the two rotor will stop once rotor stops now give input for phase c winding next give the current pulse for phase c the moment you give current pulses for phase c phase b winding does not create any magnetic field 
okay now it is the time for phase c winding to create a magnetic field okay and here north pole and here south pole and flux will always flow from north pole to south pole this way okay and as it is a north pole south pole will create south pole north pole will create here and once again magnetic attraction force will be there because of that force south pole is attracted here north pole is attracted here the rotor will experience anti clockwise direction torque and how many degrees the rotor will rotate again what is the angle between these two you can check this will be 30 degrees again so that means the rotor will rotate by one more step 30 degrees next give current pulse as input for phase a winding again rotor will rotate by one more step 30 degrees phase b 30 degrees phase c 30 degrees so for every input pulse rotor will rotate by how much angle 30 degrees that 30 degrees is what we call it as step angle now i would like to derive a small formula for step angle right now step angle alpha first of all what is mean by step angle it is the angle by which the rotor will rotate for every one input current pulse if i give current pulse for phase a winding the rotor will rotate by some angle 30 degrees that is what we call it as step angle and the formula to calculate step angle is there are two formulas you can use any formula i will write uh, both of them you can derive and it is a simple formula also okay we will try to relate this formula with the example what we considered so far so it is equal to number of poles present in stator minus number of poles present in rotor divided by product of stator poles and rotor poles and multiply with 360 degrees 360 degrees means one revolution and please tell me in the previous example that we considered how many stator poles are there can i say there are six stator poles and how many rotor poles are there four rotor poles okay so there are six stator poles four rotor poles divided by six stator poles multiplied by four rotor poles and multiply with 360 degrees yes this calculation will give you 30 degrees and that 30 degrees is nothing but step angle here okay this is one formula you can use when you know the number of poles in stator and rotor what if a stator and rotor are designed with the same number of poles stator and rotor are designed with the same number of poles the difference becomes zero indirectly step angle is also zero that means indirectly rotor cannot rotate that is what we call it as a cogging phenomena okay cogging phenomena means rotor poles and stator poles locked with each other they are not able to rotate so never design stepper motor with the same number of poles or teeth on stator and rotor okay now there is this is an important formula and questions will directly come using this formula okay number of poles in stator minus number of poles in rotor divided by stator poles multiplied by rotor poles into 30 degrees sorry 360 degrees okay this is one formula and you can use uh, one more formula here to calculate the step angle let me show you one more formula yes the other formula is step angle is equal to 360 degrees that means one revolution divided by stator phases uh, stator phases multiplied with rotor poles stator phases multiplied with rotor poles why i am talking about phases in stator you can see this de design uh, you tell me how many poles are there in stator there are six poles in stator and these six poles are wounded with how many phases three phases therefore a six pole stator is equivalent to three phase stator okay so in the example that we discussed so far there are six poles in stator that means how many phases three phases so let us use this formula also 360 degrees divided by how many phases are there in stator six poles that means three phases and how many poles in rotor four poles once again this answer is also 30 degrees that is also step angle so you can use any formula out of these two to calculate the step angle of a stepper motor okay yes in the numerical questions any one data they will give you number of phases in stator or number of poles in stator 
if a number of poles were given this is the formula state r poles minus rotor poles divided by state r poles into rotor poles multiplied with 360 degrees if a number of phases were given 360 degrees divided by state r phases multiplied with rotor poles so first of all what is mean by step angle step angle is nothing but the angle by which the rotor will rotate for every input current pulse okay that is known as step angle okay okay now let's talk about a permanent magnet type a stepper motor as the name itself is indicating permanent magnet type stepper motor that means this time the rotor will be having a permanent magnet it's not ferromagnet it's a permanent magnet as it is a permanent magnet the poles are already established this is how the poles are being created on the rotor then only the rotor will be able to rotate four poles and it's a fixed number as poles are already there on the rotor we need not to create any reluctance torque here we just uh, need a circular rotor here okay torque will automatically create big because magnetic field will be there on stator as well as rotor so electromagnet will create here not reluctance torque now see imagine this is a phase a winding uh, available here and the moment when phase a winding is excited a north pole will create here and a south pole will create here based on the direction of current and flux will always flow from north pole to south pole this north pole flux will go through this south pole and will reach this south pole in this way understand and what is going to happen here now this is a south pole and this is north pole attractive force this is north pole and this is a south pole attractive force and the rotor will automatically rotate in clockwise direction by how many degrees 30 degrees the moment when the rotor rotated indirectly one step is created and then give the excitation to b phase one more step will create c phase one more step will create okay and every step will rotate the rotor by 30 degrees so see the design is only different but can i say the principle of operation will be same the design is only slightly different but the operating principle is more or less same in both designs six poles are available on stator four poles are available on rotor and the rotor will rotate by 30 degrees angle okay but the only difference is in the previous case we are using a salient pole type rotor but here we are using a circular rotor with permanent magnet type okay but in both cases the operating principle will be same and the rotor will rotate by 30 degrees angle understand all right now let's talk about some of the other important terminologies about a stepper motor we already discussed about step angle it is the angle by which the rotor will rotate for every input current pulse now the next one is resolution what is mean by resolution resolution is nothing but the number of steps required for the rotor to complete one complete revolution can i say one complete revolution means 360 degrees so in order to complete 360 degrees how many steps we need that is nothing but resolution you see in the previous example what is the step angle alpha is equal to 30 degrees that means for every input pulse the rotor will rotate by 30 degrees therefore to cover 360 degrees how many steps are required so to cover 360 degrees or to rotate by 360 degrees how many steps are required how many steps we need how many steps are required and that number is nothing but resolution so tell me every step 30 degrees means to cover 360 degrees how many steps we need 12 steps we need therefore resolution is equal to 12 in this particular case every step 30 degrees if 12 steps are given 12 into 30 360 degrees therefore can you tell me how this formula 12 arrived here so that resolution 12 is equal to 360 degrees divided by 30 where that 30 is nothing but step angle so resolution is equal to 360 degrees divided by step angle alpha this is one more important formula as far exam is concerned okay if you know step angle you can find out resolution or if you know resolution you can also find out step angle i repeat again resolution is nothing but the number of steps required for the rotor to complete 360 degrees exactly okay yes this is about uh, a brief introduction related to stepper motor okay 
Now, based on the knowledge that we gained so far, let's try to answer a simple question. Look at this example. A stepping motor has a step angle of 6 degrees. Find the resolution of the motor and also what is the shaft speed in RPM if the stepping frequency is 1800 pulses per second. PPS means pulses per second. So, the first question you can easily answer because we just found the formula for resolution. Yes, what is the formula for resolution? Resolution is equal to 360 degrees divided by resolution is equal to 360 degrees divided by step angle. And what is the step angle in the given question? 6 degrees. Okay. Therefore, 60 is the resolution. Am I right? That means indirectly 60 steps are required to complete one revolution. Okay. That is the meaning of it. Okay. Resolution is 60. Okay. What is one more question we need to calculate? Yes. What is the shaft speed of this motor if the stepping frequency is 1800 pulses per second? That means the input current pulse frequency is 1800 per each second. We know that for every one pulse, rotor will rotate by how much angle? Step angle alpha. Okay. For every input pulse, the rotor will rotate by one step. But here we are giving how many pulses per second? 1800 pulses per second. Okay. See, one pulse means, one pulse means one step. One step means how much angle in the given question? 6 degrees. That means for every one pulse, rotor will rotate by 6 degrees. But if I give 1800 pulses, okay, 1800 pulses, indirectly rotor will rotate by 1800 steps. 1800 steps means what is the total angle? 1800 into 6 degrees. This is the total angle that, that a rotor will cover with 1800 pulses. But in the given question, 1800 pulses were given in how much time? One second, right? So, given question is 1800 pulses per second. That means this much angle is covered by rotor in one second indirectly. 1800 pulses means one second. So, in one second, the rotor will cover 1800 into 6 degrees. But we need the answer per second, speed in second or speed in minute? Speed in minute. Minute means can I say 60 seconds? If this is the angle rotated in one second, in 60 seconds what will be the angle rotated? Multiply this with 60. So can I say this is the angle covered by rotor in 60 seconds? 60 seconds means one minute. Okay. So therefore the answer is in one minute the rotor will cover how much angle? 1800 into 6 into 60 degrees. Am I right? But we have to convert this answer to revolution per minute. We know that one revolution means 360 degrees. Therefore, this much angle means how many revolution? Therefore, number of revolutions per minute is equal to just divide this angle by 360 degrees to convert the angle to revolution because one revolution is equal to 360 degrees. Therefore, this much angle belongs to how many revolutions you just divide with uh, 360 degrees. Okay. If I divide with 360 degrees, can I say it will become 1800 RPM? Therefore, 1800 pulses per second is indirectly equal to 1800 RPM in the given question because the step angle is only 6 degrees. Suppose if the step angle is not 3, 6 degrees, suppose if the step angle is 3, 3 degrees, then what, ha what happens here? Hmm? What happens? Uh, then the value will change. You will get 900 RPM. If the step angle is 12 degrees, you will get 3600 RPM. So, it depends upon the step angle. Okay, simple question. And these type of questions will usually come in state services exam or engineering services exam. Okay, so there is a lot to be discussed about stepper motors, but we don't have that much time. Okay, there is a detent torque, holding torque, pull in torque, pull out torque, characteristics of the stepper motor, how to reverse the rotation of the stepper motor. Okay, so very simple. In order to reverse the rotation of the stepper motor, a simple trick we need to follow that is what we usually do with the induction motor also. If the sequence is ABC, if the machine is rotating in one direction, change the supply sequence to ACB, the motor will rotate in opposite direction. In the same way, stepper motor can also be reversed. You can try with the same example that we considered, a six pole state or four pole rotor. Okay. So, but as far as the exam is concerned, you need to understand what is mean by step angle and how to calculate step angle and what is resolution and what is pulses per second and all okay right
थैंक यू सो मच